I still remember during my early days when I bring back my report card uh, and you know, really happy at uh, hitting 80%. My mom says, so who was the highest? Uh, not thinking about, I had 45% in the previous exam, now I've gone to 80 and I'm so, but who was the highest? So it's always about the, the competitiveness, which uh, I don't think brings out the best in human being. Essence of the matter, we move to education in human rights, education in global citizenship, etc. Uh, you know, it is a different plane altogether. But the problems that all the countries uh, studied and many more countries in the world are facing in the field of education is basically equity, inclusiveness and quality. Precisely because today the situation calls for very uh, drastic critique and drastic remedies. If you look around at the crisis of the environment or you look around at the level of violence in today's social ethos, right here in South Asia as well as across the world, if you look at, look at uh, conditions of conflict, um, gender conflict or violation of human rights, any number of things will remind you that there is a very major crisis in human affairs and human relations. And to a great extent, education has precipitated this. It has contributed to that crisis. And this is why it's very important for us to rethink education. We can study through our own effort. And if we study them, perhaps we will find ways then to resolve some of those issues. I mean, water, for example, is another theme like that, that you can begin to study from your school itself or from your home and so on. These are the ideas that you do. This is the way to prove to the, to make the child realize or prove to the child that the world is unsustainable. Uh, by exploring it, by documenting, by analyzing and gradually seeing, well, if I use so much water and everybody is going to use so much water, where will the water come from and so on and so forth. These are well-known ideas in sort of child-centered education that you make a child um, actively explore the world if you want the child gradually to make some sense of it. Now, that's not what schools are doing today. Instead of doing that, what are schools doing? Schools are actually telling children. Teachers are asking them to do exactly what is to be done. And for what? So that you pass the weekly test well. So that you have a series of examinations which you will do well and you will do that right from kindergarten onwards. Instead of opportunities to explore, to reflect, to uh, share different people's I different ideas within a classroom, children are being told that there is one way of doing these things and it's been done and this is where it is. Regimentation of our children's minds is the most common phenomena in our classrooms today. And that is one of the things that we discovered across Asian countries. In these 22 uh, curriculum documents or uh, other policy documents in these 22 countries uh, that we studied carefully, we were quite amazed to find that the discourse is uniform across countries that are as different as, let's say, Thailand or Indonesia, Bangladesh, Pakistan. The discourse of, is so similar. We did a 2015 survey, a global survey, where we had about 1,500 over students and it was about trying to get an understanding of their perception of peace, sustainable development, uh, human rights and, and surprisingly it wasn't, it wasn't designed but out of the 1,005 we had about one third who had a lot of exposure to the education like education for sustainable development, education for peace some who had partial and some of them who had none. 
And what we found was that there was no difference among all three groups on their perceptions and their values towards sustainable development peace. Uh, so we figured that <coughs> Uh, what's going on, what's, going, what's, uh, what's not working. So we decided to take on this review on the curriculums, on the policies, whether there was any policy incoherence among those different, uh, in terms of there was a policy for e uh, education for sustainable development, but there was a policy at the educational level which focused more on the notion of literacy and numeracy for economic productivity. And that's what we found uh, as a conclusion. We have to, uh, you know, keep in mind is to uh, give an edu education, uh, provide an education system which can transform the person and then the person can, you know, um, make a uh, good contribution to society and the person himself or herself can be transformed into a good person because uh, whatever kind of skills you you know may provide to these uh, you know individual persons if the person himself or herself as a person is not uh, uh, kind of you know um, uh, compassionate loving person you know kind person patient person and it is not going to work. Therefore, we need to change in order to bring transformation, uh, you know, among the children. That kind of education system is required. In uh, the life of uh, a nation or uh, the world, the need arises to rethink uh, uh, from time to time in the light of the changes that have taken place. We have gone through <laughs> a phase of tremendous changes in the last 50 years or so and therefore it is extremely important that we think about uh, education for the 21st century. Education has two roles to play basically. One is instrumental, other is intrinsic. And uh, instrumental means that it, is, it can be used for uh, making earnings, for increasing the GNP of a nation, the, the, which is called the human capital theory of education. And other is the intrinsic value of education. Education which is worth pursuing by itself without putting a money tag on it. And that is uh, how we live with others, how we work for peace, how we interact with other human beings, how we try to understand their culture, their history, etc. And uh, in the four pillars of uh, education that has been outlined in the Delor Commission, one of them is uh, how to live, understand and interact with each other. And the humanitarian aspect is important from that angle. If you ask somebody, what would you, you know, uh, how would you be happy? Then to have a very good house and good, you know, cars and good positions, good ba bank balance and things like that. They would never say that I, I need a peaceful mind. If you ask, you know, today if you go to Connaught Place and ask a hundred people, then most of the people would say that, you know, material kind of gain and achievements and uh, things like that. But Hardly anybody would say that uh, I want a peaceful mind, the happy mind. So that this very kind of situation, you know, decides how we are defining our, you know, goal of life. And and accordingly, the government also sets the, you know, the policy, and then, you know, accordingly all the policy and then the regulations are made. So, in fact, uh, our education in the present, uh, you know, modern society has become so materiali materi materialistic uh, and material-oriented uh, kind of education. Absolutely extroverted. 